Hello, and welcome to Look Smarter Than You Are with OBIEE. This is the fourth and final part in importing ASO as space databases into the repository. And now we're just about ready to go ahead and bring ASO sample over. Again, at this point in time, if we needed to write any type of logical calculations or things like that, we would definitely do that here in our business model and mapping layer. Also, if we wanted to rename anything, we were unhappy with the name that was assigned to it, this would be the place to do it here in the business model and mapping layer. We, we could rename things. I'm also going to show you a little trick from the tools menu under options. And it is this little option right here that says skip Gen 1 levels in S-based drag and drop. Okay, what happens when you check that box and you drag and drop an S-based database from one layer to another is that it does not bring Gen 1 from the physical layer into the business model and mapping layer or the presentation layer. And think about it, Gen 1 is normally the dimension header. So normally speaking, you, you really don't use that Gen 1 member for anything. So sometimes it confuses the users. They see Gen 1 and they get confused. So I, I do like to turn that option on if I'm going to do a lot of S-based work. But I just turned it off here again. So I just wanted to show you that that's available. And I'm now going to drag ASO SAMP over to the presentation layer. All right. I'm going to close it, the business model up, and go ahead and show you what ASO SAMP looks like. Now remember that we could right click and create a new presentation table and go through that work. If let's say that we wanted to group some like items together that weren't together, I showed you how to nest that earlier. But at this point in time, I think I'm happy with everything. I'm gonna say file and save the repository. And yes, that I'm gonna check in, I'm online, so I'm getting prompted to check in my changes. And yes, I do wish to run the global consistency check. I need to make sure that everything's okay. It's now letting me know that my new business model is consistent and should it be made available for queries? Yes. Okay. Again, I'm in a repository where lots of things are going on. These warnings are not our warnings, fortunately. We have no errors, which is what I'm really focused on. So since I have no errors, I'm going to go ahead and close this window. If I had errors, I would have to correct them because otherwise restarting my BI server would not work. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close the repository and I just and of course the warning that I have to go ahead and restart BI in order to see my changes. That's normal. I'm going to go ahead and um, fire up Firefox here and let's take a look in the web client at how our repository looks. So I'm going to go ahead and log in to OB. And I was actually logged in earlier, which is why it didn't prompt me for a login, but normally you would get prompted for a login. And I just want to show you um, kind of a little shortcut. So it said I had to restart the BI server, but really I can come here to the administration link if I'm an administrator. And underneath my maintenance and troubleshooting section, there's reload files and metadata. And I can go ahead and reload the files. Of course, not doing this during, you know, uh, production situation. So I'm going to reload my files. Great. And now that should have brought over the changes that I just made. So if we see ASO SAMP and we do, all is good. If you don't, then you would obviously have to stop your BI server, restart it for that RPD file to get uploaded and become active. So underneath sample, we see one simple little measure there, okay? And pay attention to the order that your columns are presented to the user here. If you don't like that order, it's in the presentation layer with your subject areas in the RPD file, the repository. You reorder the files there. I happen to like having the measure first. A lot of other people say no time should be first because you create no reports without time. My opinion, you never create reports without your bit of gold. That's where your numbers are. If you don't bring gold into the report, you have no numbers. But so again, you would bring your measures in. And then you start describing your measures. So it sounds weird. I said measures, but yet here I have my measures table. Okay, and I only have Gen 3. Why do I only have Gen 3? Because we did value-based. This is a value-based hierarchy here. So that's why we don't see Gen 1 or Gen 2. 
All right, so let's take a look at what products looks like as well. So again, um, this one's a little bit more challenging to see because the generations are actually named, but there's my product SKU that I could bring in, my product category, my product hierarchy. So I did not convert this to, to a single hierarchy. I'm still seeing everything there. And of course, my month to date, quarter to date, and year to date are definitely separate hierarchies. We converted them and then I, I changed them back. And so you can see that they do show their Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5, each hierarchy, in addition, of course, to the hierarchical column itself. So again, these are attribute columns, flat. Here is my alias, by the way. Okay, so there's my default for every single generation. And also my hierarchy as well. So hopefully you saw that it's very easy to bring an ASO cube into the repository. And I thank you for watching this video.